Are you going to hum to your opener? <laughs> no. From Erie's own government access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... City Councilman Cass Wachowski and my good friend and sidekick, DJ. You know, every everybody had a sidekick in the old days. Is that because they would kick them in the I, side? I don't know. Hey, we had to look up the meaning of sidekick. Maybe that has something to do with it. It's like wingman. You could be a wingman. Is that better? <laughs> that works. You like wingman better? Wingman's cool. I love chicken wings. That helps. How about my flank guard? Right guard. Deodorant? No, you're, no, you're you want me to be your deodorant? I'm not. No. Here we go. <laughs> go ahead, caller. <laughs> yes, I'm calling from Community Access Television. I'm calling because your date is wrong. Oh, well, thank you for that, Mr. Person whom I don't know. Wait a minute. Did they get that much time down there to look at the date? Yeah, I know. We don't really do anything. Wait, who? Oh, look at that. Uh, who, oh. who said it was wrong? No, I don't know. You, you're crazy. I'm looking. It looks okay now. All you people down there are nuts. Oh, and then they hung up on me. My <laughs> own, my own people. Well, we got to thank Cat TV for. What do you think? <laughs> thank you, Cat TV, for whatever it is you do. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good, though. At least, at least somebody's watching, right? Yeah, yeah, really. The date they got Mike. They got Mike on a date. That's oh. all. That's all we do all day long is just watch you guys. Critique. Yeah, we're like, oh look, it's Kaz. Oh, look, it's Kaz again. <laughs> I still want to do a show on Cat TV sometimes. Do it! Come down. It'll be it wide open. Yeah, well, maybe soon, but not now, after things, and then, yeah. Exactly. I got, I got to talk to you about two things after we leave, before I leave. All right. But, so what do you, what do you think? I think a lot of things. Um, there was some discussion last week about body cams for the police officers. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, you guys could run kind of your own unofficial test of that. They make these cameras. They're eight HD cameras, little tiny cameras that you could buy for 150 bucks. City Springs for a couple, couple of them. Throw them on a couple of officers, and just see. Well, it isn't what the it isn't the money. Uh, although that is one of the issues, yeah, and a, and a big issue. Mm-hmm. It's right now the legality of them. I think it's legal. I don't know. I don't think it's not legal. You know what the key word in your statement was? Think? Yes. <laughs> because because that's why you're having the arguments you do now, like in Pittsburgh in those areas. Pennsylvania's wiretapping laws. The wiretapping law allows for video as long as there's no audio. Yes, but it also... It's not helpful. There are times when the police officer will not be allowed, under certain situations, to turn on his camera. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're videotaping young kids, right? Yeah. Who maybe what do you call it? Uh, Under some sort of protective care stuff like that. And, yeah. And going into ob- the obvious things like mm. public places where mm. people are not doing anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Or really private places that goes no, for, you know, doesn't need to be expunged on. I can see that. But or even going into a person's house that on less than a, in a, in a combative issue. In other words, uh, you know, you want to talk, talk to us, talk to someone, you know. Yeah. And then there is the evidence gap. You saw what happened in Columbus, Ohio, where they hired an expert to clean up old files, and they want to clean up some of the new ones. Oh, whoops. So there's a, yeah. there is a record-keeping component to that. Right, right. Uh, it's not as simple as, you know. Okay, I thought it was just more. Yeah, it, no, it's, you know, it's going to come. And I've talked to police officers, and like like they told me, it will make them look good ma- yeah. majority of the time. Yeah, no, that's good. And, and I hope that this clears soon. Yeah, and it's they just, use them all over the place. I think you have a better chance of seeing uh, cameras on cars right away. That's good. I got one on my car. I bought it for sixty bucks on eBay, and it records everything in front of me and behind me. You always have to be careful with cameras because you know it's like when you watch people taping stuff with their phone. Yeah, you don't always get the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's what makes it tough to. Uh, 
Yeah. And, and remember, even with body cams, you've got to be having them lined up properly. Oh, sure. Things, yeah. things are fluid, you know. Not gotcha. like you got 360, you know, you can. Yeah, yeah. But I think it'll come, but it's going to come, you know, with, with a lot of thought process. Technology is working so fast that we can't, you know, it was like in the old days when we started having, I mean, you start laughing, but, you know, radios and cars. Yeah. You know, <laughs> technology even back then with the police departments were moving quick. Right, right. Or you have you had fingerprinting, DNA collecting. Yeah. All that has to, you know. It's, I know. Things it move time. at a much faster clip time. today than. Yeah. Hey, it's okay, man. It's all And I was watching yesterday in 60 Minutes how, you know, social media can, can ruin people and it's unchecked. Social media is ruining a lot. It's like things. a game in itself <laughs> now. You have to hire cops to be cyber experts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people tend to uh, get a little overzealous when they hide behind a keyboard and a monitor. They think they can get away with And today, with everything. everybody with cell phones, I mean, everybody sees what they want to see, and they make a story. But, you know, a lot of times when you're at the other end judging people, and I have been, you know, on personnel issues, and yeah. it's not always an easy thing to, uh, you know, what looks obvious sometimes isn't obvious. And some things that are... You know, are what do you see? Fake news. What? Fake news. Yes. There's a lot of that out there. Yeah. We are not fake news. We are. Real. I will say this: over the years, I've never, although I've had disagreements with mainstream media. Yeah. At least I knew where to find them. Yeah. Yeah. No, really. I mean, you know. Yeah, like I said, everybody's hiding behind keyboards and monitors. You don't know where it's actually coming from. They've never been here. They've never actually taken part in anything, yet they somehow know it all. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know how that is. That's social media. I say we just shut off the Internet, pull all the plugs. It's done. No more Internet. We don't need that, right? Yep. What did we do before the Internet? Everything. We actually interacted with people. <laughs> yeah, you actually had to be like, oh, hey. You're there. It's hard these days. People don't know how to be people. They're forgetting. Hey, that's crazy, but anything else? I got nothing. That was the one point that I was thinking of over the last week. Um, I have other notes that I've taken before, but you always inform me when something's happening so we know what's going on with certain things. Yeah, we're pretty much... I don't have anything Things specific. Things are quiet, but hopefully on the, you know. Yeah. We're starting to kind of move slowly on our comprehensive plan. Mm, good, good. It, you know, we start putting little pieces in place. and I was afraid that was just going to be a comprehensive plan and never a comprehensive action. No, I think actually with, <laughs> with, with most plans, nothing ever happens. Yeah, but, exactly. Or very little. But with this one, we may not get it all done because... Yeah. I mean, you always look at what could happen, but I think certain steps are being taken, but mm -hmm. it's going to be a long process. I was talking to a gentleman who was from Detroit, you know. And Detroit's you know, on the uprise again, I heard. Slowly, that, yeah. but, I mean. It's going to take time. A lot of the, a lot of the big cities are, are terribly in trouble, you know. Oh, yeah. We've had a change of heart, you know. I bought the news the other day, and I, I keep harping on it, but I don't want to be... I'm not negative. I'm just yeah. realist. You know, the county yeah. population dropped again. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Thank you. Oop. <laughs> well, please try again. Yeah, give us a call. We're here. But, yeah, the population dropped again, you know. Yeah, I had heard that. What Did, did they give a number? I didn't catch what it dropped. I think it was uh, two or 3,000, I thought it was. Mm. But they explained how the net net migration, well, they put the births and the deaths and all that. Yeah. Then they classified it. For the, what a census bureau was great. I remember one time we had to set, trying to think what census it was. Uh, from the, right after I was first married, they chose me to be uh, somebody they follow up on. They have some people they follow up on for the next ten years. Yeah. And they question you. Have you know? Have you changed a job? Have you moved? <laughs> yeah. Been a victim of crime? Yeah. And that's how they they wow. they, they do their statistical analysis. You know, are you still living where you did before? You know, are, what's your income? You know, he entered voluntarily. But one of the deals I made with him was they they gave me the whole packet of demographic data on Erie. Mm. 
It was beautiful. I mean, you had it by block, by ward, and it would explain to you the ages in each area, the uh, income level. Yeah. Now, probably today that thing would be out the window. You know, be, it was a different world 20 years ago. It's, it's hard to even get people to answer the census forms. <laughs> but that's how they, you know, that's how they derive at their data when they, when they make comments like, well, like when you look to Erie, Erie County, they had... Go ahead, caller. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good hey. evening. I understand the mayor is not going to apply for that $5 million from the state because Casey Wells and his group won't sign that. They'll be taxable. Well, I think, you know, he hasn't talked to council about it, but from what I understand, uh, he's not real happy with the fact that uh, when we allowed those two hotels, you know, they actually were built and, we, you know, they have to be cleared because of uh, the waterfront development usage. You know, that has to go before council and everything. Yes. And then when they pass that state law and all that, well, you know, the mayor's hope and much of council, I would tend to believe, back to mayor in this, that we would like to see some taxable property, I mean, some taxable parcels on that property. Makes sense. But I think what I'm afraid of, and I thought about this, and I didn't talk to the mayor about it, but it's funny it came up because it was my thought was, what would happen, and you could make this case. Let's say you want to bring a Ruth Chris Steakhouse to Erie. And let's be fair, those two hotels, at least the one, is way beyond Erie's market capabilities. True. I mean, if it was done on its own, Nick Scott told you that because he wouldn't build it, you know. Not on his dime, Okay. He didn't have a room tax or a county bond issue to subsidize him. So already you know that the Sheraton is probably a hotel that normally wouldn't have been built near you. That's no doubt about that. So, I mean, okay, so they, you know, they did it by the way they did it with tax, tax exempt and all that. But let's say, hypothetically, we want to put a Ruth Chris Steakhouse near you. Now, you know we're, we're not a market for Ruth Chris. I never even heard of them. Yeah. Well, Ruth Chris is like... Uh, I'll put it this way, John. It's one of the top state. It's like an Emerald Lagasse restaurant. Oh. Okay? I think he's a horrible cook. He, he, he may be, but his name is big, okay? Yeah. See, see well, well, you've been out of town. You've been in New York, right? Some sections, yeah. Well, you've been to, you've seen some of the fancy restaurants, right? No, I always went to the cheap ones. Well, that's you and I both, but, I mean, you've heard of the big ones, right? Yes. Well, like Morton Steakhouse and... Uh, Don Shula's Steakhouse and Ruth Chris and places like that. That's high-end steakhouses. They, they probably wouldn't come to Erie. Erie's not that kind of town. You know, we're happy going to Ricardo's or or other steakhouses around town and or, steak, or Barry's Boardwalk out on Route 8, you know. The best steakhouse in this town, people won't even know it. They're closed now. It used to be Pilatas on 26th and Cherry. Well, you get the point, though, right? We're, we're a little, you know, we like our, we, we don't pay big time. So let's say they were going to bring one to Erie, and they said, well, the only way we can bring it, or how about this, how about a Joe's Crab Shack? You heard of that one, right? Yeah. Okay, Joe's Crab Shack won't even go up to Mill Creek because they don't have enough people in the area. You need 250,000 people in a very tight circle, not the whole county. Yeah. And so we're at least, I, from what I last was told, we're about 90,000 shy of the area they would like. So let's say we built one down there, and the only way we could build it was we had to give them a tax-free building. Mm. You know, and all they have to do is justify saying, well, that's part of the Civic Center mission because, you know, conventioners would want to eat there. Mm. They could do that for the whole project, right? Yeah, you could. But, uh, I mean, that's how they justified the hotels under the state law was... The and don't forget, we've had down at the convention center, and see how many have returned. Uh, well, you you will have one this year. The Pennsylvania Municipal League is coming back, and like what we've been told, John, a lot of these conventions, they're on like a ten-year cycle, like with the League of Cities. True. It's unusual that the Pennsylvania Municipal League, which is the old League of Cities, is coming back twice in Mayor Sinnott's term. That's unusual. It's not usually, it doesn't usually happen. Well, that's 12 years, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I mean, that's even unusual because what they usually do is they, they start going, uh, you know, almost every city in, the, in Pennsylvania has had it 
with the exception of Wilkesbury recently in my time. But, you know, we've only been to Philly once in that time. We go to Pittsburgh, but we go to many different locations. But Erie's had it now twice. It's going to have it twice now in a very short time, time frame, which is unusual. But a lot of the conventions, like I was talking with different groups around town, they said, well, we're going to have one in two years. That's how they work it. So, I mean, they do come back, but what we're worried about is how much that property is going to be taxable. Well, yeah, just look at look at the industries you have down on the Bayfront, and uh, they're not on a tax roll. Well, no, how about this? Tom Kennedy built a hotel, right? He's on the tax roll. Right, now, we, did we give him some tax breaks? We gave him some programs, but he's going to be taxable. True. Uh, uh, Nick Scott, his project's going to have some help. But at the end of the day, his hotels are going to be, if he builds one, which he said he is, he's going to be taxable. Mm. And, I, and Chris Scott was on TV the other day complaining. I mean, what's fair is fair, okay? It's true. I mean, you know, and, it, and really, at the root of the problem, the people that really suffer is not the Scots or the Kennedys, but when we don't collect tax, guess who's got to pick it up? We do. That's right, the homeowner. That's like all with all these various bonds. We have to pick that up if they default. Yes, you're right. In fact, a lot of that stuff, like uh, before the Civic Center went over to the county, that was our dime. We, you know, if they went belly up, we that was our baby. And then that, that's complete fraud down there, anyways, because you change at the time it was the Tulio Convention Center. Mm-hmm. They changed that name so they could bring in another one. Well, they got permission from the family. But they still call it, John. I, this is, that's an illegal trick of going to make another convention center and just change the name. Well, what they did, they did the Wilkesbury trick. Wilkesbury has what they call uh, Casey Plaza. Yeah. So what they did in Erie, they they took the uh, well, the it used to be the Tulio Convention Center. Right. But that was in the days when you had the Warner. The arena, the baseball park wasn't there, but you had the, the Sears. That was supposed to be the convention hall that never happened. Yes. They only had two things in that con- in the old Sears building. And so that was called the Tulio Convention Center. And the arena was, uh, yeah, Tulio Arena. But then they changed. Now they made the arena different for naming rights, but they call it the Tulio Plaza. Yep. You know, that's that area down there that's, that's kind of where you have like a cul-de-sac? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like the lawyers, they don't have, have their hands in their pockets, they have their hands in your pockets. Well, that's a... Yeah, I was, I was listening, on, coming down there about like the Oakland problem with the football team. Yes. You know, they expect the city to pay for it. True, but they're paying for it all over anyway. But not in California. They said California... Is the only state that doesn't, uh, they don't care if the NFL's there? Well, Wisconsin. The owners have to pay for the, all those stadiums out there. Wisconsin, the, the citizens own that. Look, what, what, what is that field? Yeah, you mean Lambeau Field. Lambeau Field? Yeah, but you'll never see, you'll never see the public allowed to own another NFL team. Hmm. They won't let that happen. Well, no, because there's big money involved. Well, you know, basically Green Bay's not much... Green Bay's about an area like Erie. True. And if you had, like... If you really had 80,000 people in Erie or the surrounding area that wanted to go see a football game, we could have a team under Green Bay's rules. Hmm. No. Huh? Well, you could. Why? Because you won't be able to get the franchise. No, no, I mean, if you had one, like... In, Green Bay goes back to the days when they were playing in Canton and Portsmouth. Oh, yeah. In Massillon, Ohio, and they kept the team. You know, they didn't allow it to move down the road to, to uh, what do you call it, Milwaukee. True. So let's say we hypothetically had a team back then, you know, and we had 80,000 people that were willing to buy stock in it. We had to read that. Yeah. I think, you know, years ago, we if we had been in the, end of the old NFL, we might have been able to pull it off if we had that kind of support. That's true. But Green Bay's a, it's a different animal there. Oh, you see what the Twins are doing this year? What's that? They're selling a, a packet of 33 games. Their, their, their revenue must be so low. The packet for 33 home games is like 99 bucks. Where, in Minnesota? 
baseball. Minnesota? Yes. That's a beautiful stadium. I've been there. Three dollars and thirty cents a ticket. Wow. And that's a be- let me tell you something, John. That is a beautiful stadium. Yep. I've been there. It's it's one of the nicest. And the people are, you know, when you wear your other team's colors, they're, they're very respectful. They don't beat you up. No, they don't. <laughs> that's good. Not nice. like Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what about this hearing they're going to be having about where the assets go from the gaming funds? I mean, I don't see any any nonprofits getting their hands into that. I think it should go to someone out there who wants to bring something in to the city. Yeah. The fund should be given to them, not to the Waterford Fair, the Wattsburg Fair, the Albion Fair. This gaming money is a, it, it's a joke. Well, we're gonna have. A, I'm gonna try to get there and lend my opinion. And I think like Erie itself has gotten, even though uh, Perry Wood says he has, but he gives it to the nonprofits. But the city itself, we could use money for like our economic packages, you know, renovation, elimination of blight, stuff like that. You know? What? Yes, we could. I mean, that kind of money, you know, especially when you're facing the problems, you know, that we are, and. Look, he may give us money for Celebrate Erie or for something else, and you know what? I don't care. I, I'm more concerned with the systemic problems of the city right now. Sure. So uh, we'll get off and let somebody else. Yeah. Okay, but hey, thanks for calling, John. Yeah, thanks for calling. As insightful as always. Yes, yes. But yeah, we got we got major problems in it. You know that they, they can be solved, but you know funding right now is tight. Even if we had the money, we couldn't tear down all the houses we, we would like to, let's say. Right, right. Or build new ones, you know. So it's going to take a, a partnership between the public and the private sector. And yet I'm encouraged because every I've had a few people actually come up to me and say, you know, they have groups that would be willing to actually renovate houses. Yeah. Yeah, no dime, just their dime. Let's do it. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Did you ever find out anything about the stickers on the license plates? I never got a clear answer from uh, Representative Harkin's office. I asked him about it, but they were supposed to, are you there? They were supposed to get back to me, and they didn't really. As far as I know, there's as not. As far as I know, we, uh, we, I'm the last one to get stickers. And yeah, there's to. no more. If it's in the mail, fine, but after that, any new stickers, not going to happen. Uh, the the uh, Lori called them, and they pretty much said what we did before, but. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's it. You just won't have to have a sticker because they can read your plate from miles away. But I am going to meet with uh, Representative Harkins on another issue. So Good. Get him on the show. He's I, a good guy. He's, been, he's been invited. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll talk to him. He's my buddy. <laughs> but the last I heard was there was yeah, the, the last stickers are going out, and then that's it. Should be interesting. They'll just know. They'll look up in the database, and if you're not, you know, up to date on your registration, they're going to get you a sticker or not. You got to make sure to stay up to date on that stuff. But I do have to talk to Pat. I know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a couple other issues that are, yeah, compelling. But yeah, you know, it's it's going to take a while to clean up all of this. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a lot of mindsets to change. What's discouraging is like the county has gone down a little bit, and you're starting to see some businesses all across the country starting to get a little shaky. Yeah. And some of that's our patterns of how we buy things. You know, we buy off the Internet. Yeah, I don't go to malls myself, so all those stores in there, I see their businesses. Go ahead, caller. Um, About the houses. That they're going to tear down? Well, there's some we'd like to, but go ahead. There's people out here that would like to buy them. But once you buy them, you should give them a tax break like you do the big places and let them work on them. Well, I think, uh, i got to check into it, but I think there are some programs in targeted areas that we still do allow that. Uh, Found them to, to hurry and do this and do that. People buy them, and then they have to work on them on their own time. Yeah, yeah. Time enough to fix them up. Then you got something with taxes. They'll start to pay any taxes on them. 
Yeah, we get a lot of people that buy these houses that don't do anything on them. They're just buying them for uh, equity. Mm. And Well, then you have the money. They'd be then paid for them if they don't do what they're supposed to. Then you take them back from them. Well, what we're trying to do uh, with with the land bank and everything else we're trying to, we're trying to get the state to, uh, they're starting to get some push on the legislature to change the rules about how we approach blight so that we can take care of it quicker and get it out there. And I agree with you, there's a lot of groups that want to renovate property, and I believe, I'm going to check into it, but I do believe, from what I was told, there's still some lurter out there in certain targeted areas. They can't do it like where some of us live, but in the areas that have been defined by the boundaries uh, to be in the blighted areas more, if somebody would buy a house there, they would be subject to, uh, I believe, some some tax breaks. Hmm. But I will, I'll get back to you on that. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. There's a lot of people that would work for their houses. Well, for a while we had, well, there, there, yeah, that's a, I heard one town what they did. They they gave it to city workers first, yeah. Especially police officers and firemen, yeah. And said basically, here's a house, you know, yeah. Just fix it. Just fix it. <laughs> well, what happens is all of a sudden people feel confident, yeah. You know, when they see, you know, the neighborhood start to flip a little bit, and I think this woman has a good idea of that yes. Yeah. And, and a lot of things we can't do on a state level, but. I do believe we have Lerda. I'm going to check with uh, with the gentleman upstairs and Lerda see. Lerda is what exactly? That's the tax exempt program where, for a while, uh, under the previous mayor, he had it citywide. Right. And he wanted to test how it was working. Hmm. So any kind of new development he did was was non taxable for a period of ten years. Like. Oh, that's good. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, it's me again. That's okay. Hi. Idea. Why don't the city, why don't the city buy a few um, blighted houses and fix them up as police departments in the neighborhood? Well, actually, what we're going to do with the land bank is the land bank is going to kind of be like that. Uh, redevelopment authority will buy the properties as an arm of the city, and they will put it out there for qualified. And this is the term we're going to use: qualified builders. People that have shown the willingness and the ability to renovate property will be allowed to, like, uh, I'm not, I haven't seen the final workup, but uh, they'll be given an opportunity to get in there and buy them and, and at a, you know, with, with, with less uh, paperwork and hopefully, you know, economically feasible. So that's a good idea, and I think your idea could be incorporated into that. Where, you know, we could have a couple of houses like precinct houses, you're saying, right? Right, yeah. In fact, we were offered a building. I don't want to tell you who offered it because it's kind of still in negotiations, but we were offered one, but, and I presented it to the previous chief, and it got no traction, so I'm going to bring it up again. Hmm. And the funding is a big problem, but, you know, I'm not against having like a little precinct house where. Maybe every so often we have like a police officer stationed there where a neighborhood can come in, you know. That would help on some of the crime if you would put these precincts in. Well, yeah. And think about the kids. If they get used to seeing a police officer, maybe we can, you know. And this this, this goes along with maybe give them out some little cards or some with yeah. football players like they used in the old days or. Uh, Trading cards. The neighborhood safe again. Yeah. yeah, you know, come in and meet your, you know. When, when people, I found out that one of the best programs we had when I was on the school board was we had police officers in the school that kind of befriended the kids, and the kids became very confident in them and kind of told them what was going down all the time, you know? Yeah. And we prevented a lot of crime within the schools that way. Well, good luck with the ideas. Yeah. Well, I know it's your idea, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up that the land bank is supposed to do part of that. And we'll be we'll be actually taking a uh, the city will be taking through the redevelopment a proactive approach, and actually you know pre, uh, securing properties. And if we can start read you know getting some of them done, that'll start helping everybody's image a little bit. Yeah. Are you still there, ma'am? She's gone. Oop. That's a good idea. No, that is a really good idea. You could also kind of mix it up by getting fire departments involves. Maybe it could be kind of a shared, you know. Uh, 
precinct, you could have police and fire, so there's always... Yeah, it wouldn't have to be, a, of, like, a full-time precinct. Yeah, it yeah, just no, be, just, like, it, you know, house. You know, maybe every yeah. couple hours a night, you know, if we could yeah. somehow figure out a way to get somebody in there. Yeah, that sounds good. There's a lot of good ideas. It just it People fear the police sometimes, but... The people. They, you got to get down to people's level where they're people. That's it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was, people with a I was big responsibility. I was watching some of the police work in Philadelphia, and it was like, and there's a tough city. But uh-huh. I was just watching how they interacted with kids, and yeah, so, some of our officers do it here too. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's. Uh, I think, like you know, the, idea, well, the start of the well, they got this police athletic league, which yeah. is an old throwback to when they used to have when I was a kid. Where the you know you have police officers playing basketball with the kids. Yeah, eh, that goes a long way, you know. Do they call it pal? Yeah, it's it was a it was an old throwback day they had when I was yeah. a kid, and I think it's a good idea because when kids see that you know their little league coach is a police officer or the coaches, you know. Yeah, I think it makes a big difference. You know, I think. Yeah. Kids get a little confidence level. They don't look at them as the bad guy necessarily. Yeah, you, you get to know people, and then you feel better around them, safer when you know them as people. Yeah, we have to start spending money on our neighborhoods and our kids because yeah. they, people wonder why there's problems. You know, Again, in this day of social media, you don't get a chance to see these people face-to-face. The first time you see them is when you're out and you get in trouble or something, or somebody near you gets in trouble. You've never met this officer before, but... I watched some of our guys when they were working in the uh, schools, and it was it was very, very, you know, very good, because the way you would watch the kids, they would talk to them. And, yeah, yeah. And not every kid, but there were some kids out there that, you know, they might be intimidated, uh-huh. but if you're, you know, you're shooting baskets with the guy, and all of a sudden you... You yeah. whisper something to him, you know, quietly. Well, that might uh, be something to talk to uh, Spoon about because he's got that whole basketball program well, he's ex- going on. He's actually going to try to expand his down to the lower bayfront, too. I think that would be fantastic. And maybe if he was to start bringing in officers once in a while to just mix and I think intermingle. He, I think he does have a couple there at That's times. fantastic. But, it, you know, those programs do a lot because yeah, kids... Uh, the more kids are together, especially sports wise, yeah. there's a lot of trash talking, but yeah, but there's a lot of respect too, you know. Right, right. That's something we need to get back in this country because people don't understand respect. Now you wouldn't see this today, but in the old days we would get together in school, and we'd argue, yeah, we yeah. could whoop your butt, you know, we're gonna, yeah, and yeah. and then we'd all find a way to drive down to. Like the Lower East Side and play them, and then they come up and play us in them. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, you know, was great, great, great sports. Times were simpler. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Okay, question. Yes. What is it going to cost the citizens of Erie to change those parking meters downtown? Uh, it's not going to cost anything in taxes. <clears throat> the plan will be that uh, they will. Uh, I don't. They haven't approached us about a rate increase, but uh, they will probably increase the fines a little bit, and that'll probably pay for part of it. But they're not going to get any direct tax money from the city. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be on a user basis. I I know people get mad, but basically, if you want to use their service, they may raise the rates a little bit on meters or on the traffic side. You know, if you're overtime parking. But so many of the people that park overtime in the city at night and that are, are not people from the city anyway, you know. Yeah. It's young kids partying all night and everything. and So it's going to be done on a test basis. They're going to try a couple of these meters around town. But in some ways it's going to help you because now where you're inside a building, if you ha- everybody has a, a cell phone, you have one, don't you? No. Oh, well, those are, well, if you have a cell phone... You'll be able to uh, put an app on your phone where if you're in some place and you're running a little longer, like you're having a doctor's appointment, you can program the parking meter to uh, add some money onto it so you don't get a ticket. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, use your credit card so you don't have to search for coins. Uh, and I think in some ways, you know, that's what they have mostly in a lot of these big cities already, and even some cities our size. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. So what you what will be, ma'am? You won't like. You'll basically go up to this uh, kiosk, and you'll be able to you know use your use uh, other things other than actual cash. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. But we'll have more. That program is. Uh, they we've been updated by the parking authority constantly, and as the we're doing some issues with ordinances that have to be changed. And when that all gets done and they roll the project out, uh, they're going to pick a couple test sites where they'll put these kiosks in. They'll have people there talking you through it for a while. Yeah. And uh, it'll, it'll bring you – well, you've been out of town. You've seen them, right? Oh, I've seen it. I talk about it every once in a while. Like I've, I think it'll cut down on tickets because, actually, when you think about it, yeah, the increased revenue that they'll get from people that – don't want to get tickets that now can yeah. sit in the ballpark and the game's running extra innings, can't leave the game, right, yeah, yeah. and come back. So yeah. you just sit there. Well, and I, got, I got my quarters right here. You're like, if I want to go, I got to go put this quarter in the meter, it's going to be a lot easier if I can just be like, oh, wait, I can just do it. Right, yep. I just send the money and I'm done. I'm not exactly a huge fan of all technology, but some well, it's just kind of good. Well, it's kind of like when you do the... the Turnpike and all that one. Yeah, oh, well, I got an easy pass. Yeah, I got an easy pass. It's the greatest thing I ever got. And know? my easy pass works in like three or four different states. It even works in supposedly out west and some. Well, states. I drove it all the way to. I did the one in Ohio and I did one in Chicago in the yeah. outskirts. Yeah. Because Chicago, you get hit. I know mine does New York, PA, and Ohio. You go around Buffalo, you used to be you got hit three, four times. Yeah. Chicago's like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. You go two miles on one road, then you get off and you got to do another one. Yeah. When I went out west a couple of uh, years ago, it was crazy because if you're not in the right lane, you get stuck in the wrong lane, you get fined. And it's, everything's going like 90 miles per hour. So what they're doing to, on the state now is they're kind of they're building these ones where you drive around, not through. Yeah. Like some of them, the old ones, they still got like special lanes. Yeah. But they have these other ones where you don't even bother going in there and slowing down much. That's something else I think we need, and it's, it's hard that? to convince people. But... I personally like roundabouts. It's hard for people to understand it, but there are some serious advantages. To I'll tell you what, I, I'm not a fan of them, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I had to drive at night in Philadelphia, and my GPS, needless to say, yeah. went cuckoo. <laughs> It'll do that in a city. She was telling me, stay in the left two lanes. <laughs> well, first of all, I couldn't see the left two. First of all, I don't know where the left two lanes are. Yeah. Because it takes the second one, and you're going, well, wait a minute, how do I? And then yeah. you try that in Philadelphia where you got a lot of congestion. If you're in the wrong lane to begin with, I'd never drive in you're Philly going around again. in a circle. I'm never driving in Philly again. I've been through that once. But I, I'm just not, Maybe in Waterford it works out okay, you know. That one? The, the only one we have? Well, you don't get the. I don't think the traffic is heavy. It's like. No, I, we put one down here. Put one down here at the bayfront, and the well, traffic will keep moving. That was being no looked stopping. at, but there's other plans being looked at, too. <sighs> Roundabouts. Just look at Europe. Does that make it right? It doesn't make it right, but they're really good at it. Take their example and say, hey, that really works. <laughs> this is America. We don't... <sighs> America is, what do they call it, a boiling pot? You got all this different stuff mixed in. That's just another part of another culture, another country. They did something, and they happen to be doing. Somebody it would take a survey. How many people like roundabouts? Well, you don't have. It doesn't care if they like it. They'll get used to it. Oh, wait and a minute. Learn. You know what? <laughs> you can't base all the decisions I, the, the city I, makes I, I, on what everybody. I likes. learned one thing in life: people determine how the roads are going to be used. Yeah. And eventually, the state wakes up, and they, you know, when they see nine out of ten people using the. The one lane, the way they do, yeah. or they use one road. That yeah, the state don't want you to use the road, but the, yeah. well, here's a good one: they, their state is surprised at the success of the Bayfront Highway. Mm. My question: Yeah, why? Yeah, what part of not having a lot of lights at one time surprised you that people would use it? Yeah. So now they're trying to figure out how do you get people up on 12th Street. That's a new plan. But. <laughs> The public determines how many times you you thought you had this great way of getting to the mall and find out that 30 other people use the same road you do. Oh, yeah, all those back roads. But PennDOT doesn't know that, right? So, yeah, roundabouts, yeah. even though, you know, if the public doesn't want them and they're not comfortable with them, you know. 
Sometimes you, you, you make more of a it. mess. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when I become mayor one day, 20 years from now. You can't control PennDOT. <laughs> oh, yeah? We'll see. No, PennDOT is your own little animal, but <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. You know, I know. We, we should try things. People got to stop being afraid. Every time we talk about bringing in a wind turbine they, they tried, and we have a public meeting. They tried to the transit mall out there. Yeah. You remember it? Where, which? On State Street. They shut State Street down except for two lanes. Yeah. Physically shut it down with concrete sidewalks. Wow. I wasn't here for and that. It, and the only thing to go through there was buses and emergency vehicles. Wow. Great idea. Mm. Guess what? Mm. Downtown died. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a bad idea. <laughs> and, and I remember the old, you don't remember this one, the old timers will. Mm. <clears throat> and Perry Square went the opposite direction. I heard something about that. It made no sense. I'll show you someday how it went. Yeah. It, it, it was, <laughs> it made no sense. Yeah. Because... It makes sense today. People didn't like it when they changed, but this is one that I like because it made sense. Yeah. Okay. Peace Street was one way north. French Street was one way south. Right. But in the old days, when you went down Peach Street, okay, you couldn't go north all the way. You had to turn right at City Hall. Mm. Wow. And then go down to State Street, make a left, okay, then make another left on North Park Row. And then make it right down Peach Street. Wow. Yeah, that's a pain. <laughs> and then it was and then it was the same the opposite way. So Ear Insurance and Hammett and all of them said, if we're putting all this money in developments, we want to be able to have our workers and our emergency vehicles become all the way down this way. Yeah. But when they're coming home, okay. Well, it makes sense. But it but you should have saw the outrage. So you got to be careful about change. You got to be careful, but like I said, but remember today's roundabout. Yeah, is tomorrow's cloverleaf, or yesterday's <laughs> cloverleaf? Okay. Yeah. Do you remember when they had cloverleafs? I'm picturing it. Well, it's, they still got them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know you're on Basically, the highway, and you're out, and yeah. yeah. But then somebody thought of I-79, where you got traffic going off and coming on at the same time. Yeah. To save money. Hmm. Nobody liked that idea. Hmm. You you know what I'm talking about? Not 100. percent Well, when you're on 79 now, okay. Like I'll give you a prime example. Uh, you ever go on I-80? Yes. Okay, you know where 80 joins 79? Yeah. Down somewhere around okay. Cranberry, or when something. you're taking like the yeah. there's two exits right there. Yeah. Well, as you're going off, right? Another car is coming on. Oh yeah, I've seen that. They That's because they that. don't have a clover leaf. They still do that in New York a lot. Well, that was to save money because you didn't have to build clover leaves. Yeah. But what can, you know? People never felt comfortable with those. Yeah. You still see it even on 90 when you go on 79. You got to like slide over and you're watching the. Yeah. Car come behind you. Yeah. You don't have that on a clover leaf. I, I see that, yeah. I'm just saying, you can't base a change for good or bad. You can't base that change on public. Why? Because everybody has a different opinion, especially these days on social media where everybody's like, well. What if you come to a consensus nobody likes roundabouts? Then you don't do it. That is acceptable. But the state, see, the state, they well, do then, that. then the state shouldn't. If the, the state shouldn't do something, if everybody says we're just not going to have it, then we're not going to have it. <clears throat> but, I mean, the state shouldn't be in charge of that if you have a consensus. you, you got to be careful with change. You know those two left-hand lanes that go up on I-90 off Peach Street? Yes. Watch that mess. <laughs> Either the guy in the left lane is going fast to keep everybody in the right lane out. Yeah. Or the right lane is speeding up to get by the left lane. Nobody really uses them nice and easy as a merging tool. Yeah. Knowing you can go almost a quarter mile or more down the road. Right, right. Well, it's like, I'd say it's an education issue then. You have to re educate left, everyone. And all the two hand left hand turn lanes all around town? Yeah. Watch the people that drifters, I call them. Not the musical group. Yeah. <laughs> No, I understand, but sometimes you just got to try things, and people will get used to it if it's a better idea. 
Sometimes. Sometimes. That's all I got. Thanks for joining us. Where are you going? <laughs> I got to go put quarters in the meter. <laughs> hey, get a ticket. We I, don't, to... I don't have my app yet. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Hey, it's me again. That's wow. okay. <laughs> Hi. We'll have to bring you on the show, give you a seat. Seriously. Come I on. got another question to ask you. That's okay. Go ahead. When we're, when we're about to do something for our city, build things, planning things, you know we should have a once-a-month meeting with taxpayers and citizens to question them and what we want and what we need before you go out of town and pull people in. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what we need and where we need it at. They don't live here. They don't even pay taxes here. So this should be a community thing, citizens of Erie. Just hold a meeting with some citizens and get some ideas from them. I'm sure they got good ideas. Well, maybe the new mayor or whoever that is will come up with that idea. Yeah, quit going out of town finding people from other cities. We are not other cities. Right. Erie. Well, to be fair, what I like about your idea is that as I would call it like a citizen's advisory committee. There's nothing wrong with that because, you know, great ideas come out of people. Some of the some of the things I've seen over the years, where people just start not claiming their own little neighborhood, their own little corner of the world. Yeah. And then they grew into something bigger, you know. Oh. And there was a guy I was watching uh, recently who took a part of Chicago, and he just you know bought a couple of buildings with. He and a little group of people they decided they were tired of looking at an empty building. So they made it like a neighborhood community center, you know. Yeah. And the things like that are not bad, you know. If it, it'd be like, uh, I remember talking to a guy years ago who lived down by the King Center down there, and he said, you know, he was lamenting the fact that the people aren't cleaning up their own neighborhood, you know, taking, taking control of it, because it's their neighborhood, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's our city. Yeah, you know, if we had these coordinated projects like, you know, where people had, like, you know, we do it a little bit where if they want to have a neighborhood cleanup or they want to work with us on, like, properties they know are, are harboring uh, crime or something, or, you know, they want help cleaning up their neighborhood, then, you know, we can send a few trucks down there. But yeah. that's that's what's got to happen because, you know. We don't need people from out of town coming into here. We have to pay these people to come here and tell us what we need. Well, we've never, you know, what's amazed me is... Uh, we don't need that. I just say that it, you should speak with the citizens. Well, I, I'll, I'll go even further. Like, even when we talk about, like, in a, in a school system, when we have young people that go through our system and come back from college, they should be given, you know, first crack at teaching jobs or, yeah. you know, because they, they, if they're living in the, in the community, uh, you know, they got a vested interest in changing it. Yeah, there's a lot that could be done, and we as the citizens and taxpayers, we can get it done. We don't need big heads from somewhere else coming in here, charging us money to look around and tell us, oh, you need a bridge over here or you need a street over here. No, we don't need that. That's costing us money, and evidently we need money here in this city. Yeah. So let's keep our money. I would say, you know, my idea was that if I ever, if I ever had aspired to the... Uh, to the top job up there, that was one of the things I would have loved to have seen was maybe a quarterly meeting with, you know, uh, people in the, in the communities from different parts of the city too, because every every part of the city has its own issues. Yes. You know, and I would I would have some clergy people, some regular citizens, some business people, and just meet with them once in a while on, on neighborhood issues. Yeah. You know, like you know. Are things going well? What would you like to see? Because, you know, what bothers somebody in one area of town doesn't bother another area of town. Right. And what bothers me may not bother you, you know. Mm. And we can do it. We can do it ourselves. Well, we've yeah. got to start because, you know, this comprehensive plan they talk about, yeah, it's $650 million, but you know what? A lot of that is, is a lot of fluff, too. But if people start taking pride in their neighborhood and then people start listening to them, and I mean at our end, then, you know, little things will become big things. 
you know, there's groups out there, church groups that are willing to renovate houses, you know, one house at a time. Yeah. So you start making a change. You know, somebody has a nice house next to them, well, maybe they fix up their house now. Right. And little things like... The city's got to help a little bit. Right. And, you know... The truck's out. We got people are looking to cut grass or something, you know, things that keep the neighborhood clean. There's no reason why everybody can't keep their grass cut and stuff, you know. Right. And if there's an elderly person, we kind of have to go back to the old days where... Yeah. When I was a kid, my mother would send me out and I had to cut the grass for him, you know. Yeah. But those days are kind of like they slip somewhere. Together and do it. And, you know, things like on our end, and it was suggested in that report, like when we have a piece of vacant land, maybe putting up a couple of basketball hoops or something for the kids, you know. Yeah. A couple benches and, you know, people got to take, but then people have to watch their neighborhood, you know. Yeah. But you had some good ideas, and give me a call off the air sometime. I like to meet with you. What? All right, bye. I'm in the phone book, so call me sometime. I'll come and I'll come and talk to you. Okay. You probably got. You probably be. You're one of those people I think that that we're looking for that'll that'll change the city. Yeah. I wish I could. Well, you, you can in your own little yeah, way. Everybody can. Every little bit helps. As I used to tell my wife, there's a lot of work for a few people. But just a little work for a lot of people. Yep, good one. Mm. All right, have a good week. You too. You too. Hey, yeah, that you, brings me to a question I yeah. have on keeping it local, you know, doing stuff, doing more stuff locally. Studies. When you guys order a study, is that Why do always, we go out of town? Yeah, why do you always go out of Sometimes town? Sometimes you have to. Sometimes there are, there are just nobody here that's capable of doing it. But How do we get somebody in town that does these studies? Explain it to you. Go ahead, caller. Oh, come on. What? Hello? Hello? Can Hello? you hear me now? Are you there? <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Are you there? Yes, hello. Hey. Hey, he's back. Go ahead. What's up? Um, yeah, talking about roundabouts, you know, that roundabout they're putting in, uh, area, uh, what is Millfair Road? Yeah. But that's ridiculous. I mean, all you need is a, a traffic light right there. Well, uh, my buddy DJ here, he, he loves them. I I'm mean, sorry, I'm, me, I'm not convinced of them yet. I like the idea that people can keep moving. There's no stopping. Well, and then there's space in between. Well, people can get across as well. What, what do you, ask the guy why he, why don't you like it, well, sir? Yeah, what's the location again? Fairview, what? Wilfer. Wilfer Road and uh, Route 5. Is that 26th Street or? No, oh, that's not Route 5. Uh, your Airport. Um, is that right where the bridge on the pass is? Cemetery. It's Millfair. I don't know where Millfair is. <laughs> it is the Gate of Heaven Cemetery. Yeah. Right, okay. right in the Mill Creek Fairview Line. That's why they call it Millfair. It's right where, like, gate, where he said, gate, gate of Heaven. Okay, okay. Yeah, that roundabout, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that, but what you, you don't like it, right? It's good because of the cost. I mean, it's going to be, what, a couple million dollars just to build it. Correct? Yeah, I guess. I, I, I didn't see it. I mean, they don't, they don't deal with us on that project, but... I just if they don't get enough traffic, you know, where where they put them, then there's no point in doing it. I can see not wasting two million dollars. I'm telling you, I got I, no I almost killed myself on the one in Philly. They also need to be well lit. <laughs> um well that one in yeah, I I mean that one in Waterford does work well. I've you know, I've been on that one. It does work. It's I I don't have a problem with them when they're really needed. But most of road it's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are going to be times when it's just not going to work, and I completely understand that. But there are some instances where it could. Well, uh, yeah, you've been one on, on, in Waterford, right? Oh yeah, that one. That one's actually designed double wide so that the rigs can get through it. Yeah. There's actually, the two layers. So if the rig comes in, they can go up on the higher part and get their truck all the way around. That one was actually pretty smart. I never had thought actually, of that. That's that is like three major state routes yeah. coming together, I believe, correct? Yeah, yeah. It was like Where's 97. That? 7, 19, 19, and 6 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was that one? Uh, the one in Waterford? Yeah. Waterford. Yeah. I've never had a problem with it. Just well, that in, one's in not bad because... Yeah. But imagine if you put one in, like, down there at uh, the Bayfront. Yeah. And you got the heavy traffic at 5 o'clock. Mm-hmm. 
I, when I was in Philly, it was a mess. I'm honest to God, I got in the wrong lane and I was going around in a circle. Yeah. People were honking their horns at me, almost killing me. Because, and here's me. Do we have that I, much traffic? I, I shouldn't have been there. <laughs> yeah. What, you ever been on the Bayfront at 5 o'clock? No, guess not. Got all those cars <laughs> coming down the hill and they're. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to know how to navigate a uh, traffic circle. Yeah. You yeah. Have, hopefully, you had experience with it before. Yeah, if you're gee, I remember the first time I ran into one was in Jackson, Mississippi. I came out of the airport, and I'm going, "Why am I going around in a circle? My GPS is not picking up on it." <laughs> And then you ain't got time to read it because okay. you're, you're trying to read the sign and not get your car hit from the backside. I just came up with a new thing. We'll have a hybrid circle that has traffic lights that will activate during peak oh. hours. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I, I was watching last week's show, Kev. Uh, yes. You Ron Stemka back on. Uh, you want to know why he's not on? Well, no, no. I, I did. You have a little t- discussion with him about his language. Well, he was he, um, making rude comments about people. Well, yeah, he was getting. Oh, he was he was getting a little better, but he was hung up in this water issue. And I told him, I said, uh, you know, I, I don't care how you want your bill come to you, whether you want it transparent or hidden. But and then there were, but uh, yeah, just I've been even on council. I've been trying to calm people down about. Uh, the use of uh, political axes, you know, at people and stuff, and trying to keep this show and council meetings a little bit on a on a part where we don't do personal attacks, you know. Yeah, it's, you can't do it. I mean, you can't just can't do it. I mean, if people don't like what I'm doing, and you know, vote me out of office, or but you know, when they come to council meetings or use the show to uh, berate people, you can't have that, you know. Yeah. But no, Ronnie, he comes on from time to time. He's getting better. It just, uh, I was supposed to have a guest on today, and he backed out the last minute, so DJ was right downtown here and filled in. Well, it, it seems he's, Mr. Stemka is kind of controversial. He, he, he seems like he wants to get into it with people, including well, you. Well, I tried to explain to him. I said, you know, I, there are things that you. There's reasons why we, like the bills, the bills are more transparent now. I said, you know, with the water bill, I said, we could have done like the old days and just, you know, your taxes go up and you don't know why they went up. Now you know why your water bill went up. You know, you got usage on there, but there's also an administrative fee, like I tried to tell them, is not only, you know, the cost of processing the bills, but it's also maintaining the the pipe. Even if you don't use any water, you still got to pay as a citizen for the upgrade of that pipe and the people to go out and inspect it. You're still connected. It's an on-demand right. service. And if you want it to be there, you got to pay to be connected to well, it. That makes fixed, sense. There's a fixed cost of maintaining the system, Yeah, you, whether you use it or people, not. You're paying people that are doing work somewhere else on the system, and yeah. it's, it's upkeep. So uh, it's un- I understand it. I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, but... Okay. Well, hey, it's 3 o'clock. I'll let you guys go. Yeah, you know All what, right, though? We, I'm glad you got on DJ about that roundabout. Uh, I'm going to work on him a little bit. All right. He's going to turn me against roundabouts. <laughs> Bill Pettit will get mad at me, though. He's with the state? This is the wait, uh, last. Go wait, ahead. You, I already made it busy, so one guy. Go ahead, caller. That roundabout, they built that for Walmart. Where? At... The one that in Milfair. Oh, is that what that's going to be for? Hmm. Yeah, that, for that area. It's for the Walmart traffic. And the traffic coming from Fairview out that way, coming east. I, You know, I think they work good when they're only like one lane or so. Or, but when you started like in Philly, they had one that was two and three lanes. My God, John, I was. Yeah. I felt like I was in a shooting gallery. I, uh, Milfair had two railroad crossings, and they wanted to eliminate that and build a bridge or whatever. It doesn't make sense. But I got some homework for you, Cass. What's that? The city of Philadelphia just imposed a soft drink tax. Yep. And they they collected almost six million dollars, and that money is supposed to go to the schools and colleges and everything else. So why can't we get a soft drink tax in the city of Erie and work it in with the school board to take care of some of our problems? Well, two things, John. We uh, we actually talked about it. Curtis, Curtis Jones was very adamant about uh, we want to go over some of the revenue streams we have never looked at. We'll have to check whether we can charge that under third-class law. Well, what's the 
uh, first class city. And Pittsburgh is a, believe it or not, John, is a second class city. There's one first class city, that's Philly, one second class, which is Phil, uh, Pittsburgh, one class 2A, which is Scranton, that's a hybrid, we could have been that, and all the rest, whether you're Corey, St. Mary's, Reading, York, Allentown, Erie, were third class cities. And Mill Creek is like, a, I think, a first class township or something? I'm out of the suburb, Mill Creek. No, they're, they're considered like a first class township. There are things you can and can't do under state law. We talked about a beverage tax when Flippy was mayor. Yeah, I'm talking I, about a student tax. But council, and, and also what they called a beer tax. That's how they referred to it. It never got a lot of traction, but it's something we should look at. But I'll tell you this, John, before I let you go. I was using the parking lot at the hotel I was in, okay? Mm-hmm. And parking was 30 some dollars a night. And you really got no options because downtown Philly, you're, you know, there's no street parking at all and yeah. ramps. And I was in a, the hotel's parking ramp. Well, when I left, my son visited me one day, and he, he got hit for the full day the full day fare. He thought it was going to be like 30 some dollars, I think 36 or something. Yeah. Turns out, John, they got ready for this. I'm ready. Almost a 25% parking tax. What, what sense does that make us to bring money into the, to the city? Well, I mean, here you go. I mean, you, t you talk about, you know, we charge 3% to go to the Civic Center. Everybody's squawking, right? True. In Philly, not only do you pay for pop, in fact, if you go to the suburbs and outside of, uh, I see, Philadelphia's a weird one, John. Yeah, I know that you get out of the union. Well, they, they control the school district. They're the only city that the city is in charge of the school district in PA. Plus, the city and the county are one and the same, I think. And so I don't know how far their beverage tax goes out. But when you get out in the real far suburbs, they have signs, buy your pop here, not in Philly. Yeah, <laughs> they, and they control the, the Pennsylvania house, too. Yeah, they do. And it's, it's you know, I, I, I'm not against that, you know, but, no, if but think of that, John. A reasonable tax. Think of that, John. 25, like a 20 some. I think it was almost 25% parking tax. Wow. No, my son left that ramp that day with about a 40-some dollar bill. That's amazing. Yep. Well, you have a good day. You too. You too. Take care, guys. Yep, and with that, we, we are done. No, I'm, we're already uh, busy. We're good. No more calls. We're uh, done. Okay, we're, we well, got to go. I get, interesting. I, I get the last word. What, what's your last word? Cat TV, Saturday, 9 to 4. We're having a humongous rummage sale. Please come buy our stuff. Is it this Saturday? It's this Saturday, yeah, so... We're going to have a lot of stuff. A lot of people have donated things that they didn't need anymore. Are you still taking them? And we're still taking stuff. So um, might have some. We could take donations, but please more so come and buy our stuff because that would be awesome. Thank you. That's all I got. DJ Cat TV out. Adios. I might have some stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access, Channel 9.